The practice requires strength. In times of difficulty, it requires a lot of strength. Fortunately, the kind of strength that's needed is something we can all learn how to muster. We have the potentials within us. It's simply a matter of knowing where to look and having the heedfulness that reminds us that, yes, if we're going to find a way out of the difficulty, it's going to depend on us. So we're willing to gather our strength. The Buddha lists five strengths that are important for the practice. It's conviction, persistence, mindfulness, concentration, discernment. And of the five, conviction is the most basic. All the rest depend on it. One of the Thai Johns once said that we tend to think that discernment comes from reading a lot, from having a lot of ideas, developing our thoughts. But he said that actually comes from conviction. Because what kind of discernment are we looking for? We're looking for the discernment that finds a way out. And for that kind of discernment, we have to believe that there is a way out. Whatever thoughts and ideas we develop have to be based on that conviction, if they're going to be helpful. So it's good to look at the causes that the Buddha lists for giving rise to discernment, all the way down to conviction and the causes that give rise to conviction. He lists four. He said there are four stream entry factors. Now this can mean either four factors for stream entry or the four factors that constitute stream entry. But because we're not there yet, let's look at the factors for stream entry. They start with finding a person of integrity, someone who, as you live with a person, you have gain a sense that you can really trust this person, and that they have a fund of knowledge that's deeper than what you've got. The Buddha says there's two tests. Would this person have the greed, aversion, or delusion that would get him or her to claim to know something he or she didn't know? And if they do, well, you know it's not a person of integrity. Second test. Would this person try to get someone else to do something that was not in that person's long-term interest? It was actually going to be harmful for that person in the long term. If so, if so, you know it's not the person you want. But you've got to have integrity yourself to make these judgments. You have to be honest. As the Buddha said, the kind of student he was looking for was someone who was honest and observant. Because you're going to be learning from your actions. And if you can't be honest and observant about your own actions, it's hard to be honest and observant about other people's. If being less than honest is normal for you, you're going to assume that for other people. It's going to be hard to figure out who has honesty and who doesn't. So you have to look to your own integrity. Are you willing to make changes in the way you act, the way you speak, the way you think, if you see that they're harmful? And if you are, then you can judge that quality in someone else. Once you've found someone you feel you can trust, then you listen to the true Dharma. Here again, you test it. And here again, the testing requires that you have some qualities as well that make you a fair judge. You look for the Dharma that can be put into practice and then try it out. 
think it through first. Does it make sense? Does it seem like it's going to be a good thing? What part of the mind is attracted to it? And if it's the part of the mind that you feel is honorable and trustworthy, and can then you follow through? This, the Buddha said, is where you give rise to the desire to practice. And then you try it out. The next step is appropriate attention. You ask yourself, how does this teaching apply to me, to my suffering, to my unskillful actions? Where do I measure up? Where do I not measure up? If I don't measure up, what can I do to make improvements? Because appropriate attention is looking at things in terms of what's skillful and what's not skillful, but also realizing there are duties. Skillfulness is something to be developed. Unskillfulness is something to be abandoned. So you give it an honest try. And you're honest about your ways of judging. Did you really understand the teaching? Did you follow through? Did you get the desired results? If there's anything still lacking, you make up the lack. As we were going to the fourth factor there is practicing the Dharma in accordance with the Dharma, which means practicing for the sake of dispassion. Someone once asked me, does dispassion mean that you have a robot-like attitude towards other people, and it's not the case. The Thai Giants talk of it as sobering up. You've been intoxicated with youth, intoxicated with health, intoxicated with life. And now you begin to realize that these, these things are shallow and undependable. that they're not worth pursuing. There's something better worth pursuing. That's when the mind begins to sober up. And that's when you've got strength and conviction. This conviction is sober. It's going to require that you make an effort, because that's the strength that builds on conviction, the strength of persistence. And sometimes that effort is going to require that you do things that you don't like to do, and you put up with things you don't like. The path requires a lot of endurance. It requires a lot of restraint. But you have to ask yourself, do you have good will for yourself? It's interesting that the Buddha couples his discussions of goodwill not with just expansive feelings of niceness, but with endurance and restraint. You endure other people's misbehavior. Not that you don't try to correct it when you can, but there are times when you simply have to endure it for the sake of the harmony of the group. Where you strain your own actions, your own speech, your own thoughts, the ones that will be destructive. But you do it out of goodwill. A desire for true happiness, a sober desire for true happiness. So when you have these four qualities, you found someone trustworthy, you've heard the true Dhamma, then you apply appropriate attention and you practice the Dhamma in accordance with the Dharma. That's when you have a strength you can rely on. Heedful, sober, circumspect. A sign of maturity. As someone once said, this is a religion for grown-ups. It doesn't have to be mean that you, young people can't do it. They can, but they have to have a grown-up attitude. And of course, not everyone who's old has a grown-up attitude. 
But it is something you can develop. And that maturity is what makes you strong. With it, you can withstand a lot of things that otherwise would break you. And you can develop the mind in that direction, beyond intoxication with youth, intoxication with health, intoxication with life. To build a path that goes beyond what you've ever known before.